How you doing folks? Every so often an opportunity presents itself that just cannot be walked away from. In this instance, taking a drive of this 1979 Volkswagen Type 2, aka the Sunflower. <laughs> Yes, folks, this is a 1979 Volkswagen Type 2 T2 bay window bus. And it has been in the same ownership for the last 20 years and is kind of prolific in Irish VW air-cooled circles. So um, I've seen it around quite a bit. I'm friends with the owner as well. So uh, yeah, finally dropped by. I was uh, changing the brake light switch for him. So uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't shy away from the opportunity to take it for a spin. This, like most VW buses, has a backstory. You can't have a Volkswagen van that doesn't have some backstory, but this is a really interesting one. Basically, this van has been in the family, uh, been in my friend's family for the last 20 years. Essentially, what happened was my friend's wife's uncle died and he, um, the, the intention was is that he was over in London, the family were in London, and they wanted to bring a headstone back to Ireland to commemorate him and to put in Mount Jerome Cemetery. Now, the uh, uncle's son was uh, an avid VW enthusiast and had been chasing this particular VW bus in London for quite some time and had eventually, uh, the owner of it had eventually capitulated and decided to sell it. So. That, uh, so so the, the, the cousin bought it, okay? Now, he needed to transport a headstone over to Ireland, so he used this particular bus to do that. In steps Darren, the current owner, because he met the cousin at Hollyhead, uh, well, off the boat from Hollyhead to Dublin Port, and had, uh, and this van was with him. Now, it was originally orange and white. It was a box of shit, to paraphrase. <laughs> and uh, needed a lot of work but it was uh, mechanically sound and was driving. So Darren expressed a particular interest in the van and said I would absolutely love that bus. Now Darren expressed an interest in uh, in this bus to his, uh, his, his wife's cousin uh, Mike and Mike turned around and said it's yours Darren if you want it and he said he'd been looking for this particular bus for ages for Darren and had been looking for an excuse to bring it over to Ireland and to give it to him. And Darren obviously said, I'm, I can't afford it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna buy it off you. And he said, buy nothing, it's free, you can have it. So he handed him the keys out the window <laughs> and gave him this van. Who the hell ever gets given a Volkswagen van? It just doesn't happen. Call me a little bit jealous at this point. So Darren led Mike back up to his house uh, in his uh, 91 Volkswagen Golf, which is uh, coincidental um, because there's one parked behind this at the moment, the 91 Volkswagen Golf. So he led him back up to the house and uh, Darren was shaking, as you can imagine. He's just been given a Volkswagen bus and arrives back at the house to cheers of the family who are bearing in mind they're bereaving because uh, they're, they're bereaved. They've just lost their, um, they've just lost their uncle and their father. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a, so there's a loss there, but um, in amongst that, the, the, uh, the fact that Darren had gotten this van um, from the family and, and had been given it, and they were all working towards it and working towards getting it over to him. You have to, say, you have to understand that Darren has had Volkswagen vans in his family his whole life and has always wanted another one, you know. So 20 years later, this van has undergone two restorations. It's, un it's been painted a couple of times and it's been very much personalized, as you can see, walking around it. Uh, it's an absolute thing of beauty, but to be honest with you, it's one of those stories as well worth, um, it's well worth relaying uh, because of the fact that that's the personal part behind what we like about um, about classic Volkswagens. The metal is one part of it, you know, the tinkering, the, the bits that you see me doing uh, on the channel and all that sort of thing is only one part of it. The emotion that goes into it and the, uh, the, the love that goes into it and the, the friendships that happen through the whole Volkswagen club scene is what's kept me interested in it. And it's, you know, I mean, Myself and Darren are friends now. We wouldn't have met if it wasn't for VWs. I've met lots of other friends as well through it. You know, I've gone through my fair share of Volkswagens as well. And you know, it, it, it is, it's really, that's the important part of it, you know? I mean, I don't I don't think there's any other um, car brand out there that's the same, you know? It just, 
yeah, they're just communities and that, but they're just not the same. And that is the thing about air cooled VWs and classic VWs just keeps people coming back. And, you know, I mean, the story of this particular van is just, it's, it's phenomenal. Okay, there's nothing for it than to get out and go for a drive. I am really excited about this, I have to say. It's like driving a priceless family heirloom because really that's what it is. <laughs> so I can't say I'm not a little bit kind of nervous, but I've driven bays before. To drive a bay, it's one of those type of machines. You go with the flow. You, you just, you're along for the ride. If you're racing it, you're driving the wrong vehicle. That's the, that's the God honest truth. But the, what I love about them is the driving position is just fantastic. You kind of just lean on the steering wheel. You just slouch forward, just going along, you know, listening to your music and kind of enjoying the scenery. The engine's down, back, down the back, so the engine's quiet and they're smooth. You know, torquey, but not particularly fast. This, this particular uh, engine is a 1600, it would originally have been a, a, a 2000cc, but they were quite, um, quite an expensive uh, engine to rebuild. And the 1600s, uh, 1600 twin port is arguably a better engine in many respects as well. Plus you can do a lot more with them. Um, so uh, that's why this one's had a 1600 transplanted. Um, visibility is uh, generally very good albeit a little compromised in this with you know, the stickers on the window, it has to be said, but it's all part of its charm. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're expecting to be able to go quietly into the night or kind of uh, just um, sort of go, go anywhere inconspicuously, forget about it. This one is, um, it's gonna turn heads, it's gonna make people smile, it's gonna brighten up people's day. I absolutely love them, I, you know, um, it's been a while, oh, that'll be reverse, <laughs> sorry Darren, <laughs> now you just, you take your time, this one has brake servo, it's got discs in the front, they didn't, they didn't all have that, so the brakes aren't always as sharp as this. Um, they don't have power steering. The steering can be quite wayward on them, but it shouldn't be too wayward, you know? I mean, a lot of people uh, criticize the steering for being worse than it actually uh, really should be. You know, there's lots of body roll. Sp suspension is bouncy. It's um, comfortable, very, very comfortable. But as I said, you know, it's not a rally car. They were designed for hauling loads of blocks and um, building equipment and stuff like that. You have to remember they're a, a commercial vehicle that was designed in the 60s, based on a, a design that was originally from the 50s. So there's a, there's a lot to keep in mind there. But this is a really, really well driving example. You know, I mean, it's, uh, as I was saying, uh, the reason it was over with me is because I was doing a little job on it for Darren. I was just replacing a brake light switch. Common failure point on them, by the way, if you, if you have one of these and you find your brake lights aren't working, change your brake light switch. It's usually that. I, uh, I would have put money on it being, that, being the case in this uh, instance. And I, I was right. It's a simple job. All this is doing is making me want another bay. And that's the last thing I need right now is another project because you never, you never get one that doesn't at least have something to be done. Prices for these, upwards of 20 grand. You know, you will get cheaper ones. It depends really on how much you're willing to take on. You know, but if you're looking to get a well sorted one, you can just jump into and drive upwards of 20 grand. I've seen them going for 30 grand. And as for split screen van money, mental money. You know, the reality is though, is that I suppose the thing is the trade-off in a sense is 
myself, my wife, as you uh, are probably aware, we have a T25. The trade-off in style is that the T25 is a bigger vehicle and it has a diesel engine and stuff like that and is a little bit more practical, arguably speaking. Uh, a split-screen van, for example, especially in its stock form, especially if it has a 1200cc engine. Beautiful looking van and at the pinnacle of the style, but very small inside and a very difficult van to live with as a daily if you were that way inclined. If you want the 70s style, and you want the um, if you want the seventies style, and you want the the, the look, but but you don't want to make you don't want to make the, the split screen level of commitment, and you're not willing to trade off as much style for the T twenty five bay window bus is for you. And of course, it's a personal preference thing as well. I love the look of a bay, you know. I mean, and who doesn't? To be honest with you. But here we are now. Like I mean, we're going to get up to about fifty miles an hour. I'm not going to push it beyond that. Yeah, it'll do more. That's fifth gear now. But like, look at 50 miles an hour. Not a bother to it. Maybe the speedo is a little, out, a little off. I think we're only doing about 50 now. It's an indicated 60. There's no way we're doing 60 now. It's an absolute thing of beauty, folks. It really is. You'll have sore cheek muscles from smiling or grinning just when you're driving it. So many people tell me time and time again and every VW owner hears it all the time it's like oh I'd love a camper van oh I'd love to get one Jesus I've always it's on my bucket list of cars and yet they'll go out and spend 30 grand on a Ford Focus and they won't spend 20 grand on one of these well I know what'll give me more smiles if you want a camper van and it's your dream car go and get one folks just go and do it you know they're one of those cars or vans that people should have at least once in their life if they're a real car enthusiast. Right up there are minis as well. I always think mini is the same. A car enthusiast should have, should have a mini at least once in their life. You know, I, I've driven a few bays and um, generally speaking, the handling can be a little bit in the wayward side of things. But one thing I will say about this one is it's really together. It's really tight. Okay, it's been lowered a little bit, which will certainly hel help with the body roll and handling and that kind of thing. But it is, it's it's planted on the road, you know? I mean, it doesn't feel like I'm, I'm gonna be thrown off into a ditch at any moment um, or get uh, get into the wrong lane just because of the fact that there was a stiff breeze on the motorway. It's, uh, and some bays can be like that, to be honest with you. Usually it's because bushings and ball joints or the steering box are worn out or accumu an accumulation of a lot of different things. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm driving along a back road here and, you know, one hand on the steering wheel, just guiding it along and the engine's doing its thing. It's pulling really nicely. You know, the brakes pull you up nicely as well. Here we're on it. We're on the twisties here now. You know, I, I suppose uh, one of the questions people might ask is, what are these uh, vans like to live with? Well. They do need maintenance. You do have to look after them. If you're going to expect to treat this the same as a modern Nissan Micra, forget about it, okay? It's not the vehicle for you. You do have to service them more regularly. You do have to be able to use a spanner maybe. You know, it, well, you don't have to be able to get into the kind of in-depth stuff, but it certainly helps if you can do some basic service items and stuff like that, you know? Um, and be a little bit mechanic mechanically sympathetic, I think, is the word I would use. Um, so if something is, sounding different feels different or whatever there probably is something wrong with it and you need to be attuned to that and um, a lot of the time breakdowns are caused by people just leaving something go that actually needed to be fixed about uh, a thousand miles before um, the other thing is they're a little heavy on juice you know you're, you're talking kind of 20 25 miles to the gallon is all you're getting out of one of these so you know you, you do have to be kind of aware of that 
not all of them have brake servos as well so you know having a been a, not been too afraid to give uh, give the brake pedal a shove definitely helps um, they're not as big as people make out um, they uh, they really only have the footprint of say a um, a large uh, family saloon or station wagon kind of thing you know I mean they really don't they're not much bigger because don't forget you don't have a bonnet you don't uh, you know there's not much overhang there's not uh, it's not really wide it doesn't have big wide kind of shoulders like mo uh, many modern cars have it it's uh, you know the panels aren't as uh, the, the, the 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 doors aren't as thick that kind of stuff so they make use of the space One of the nice things as well, actually, which is handy about these, and T25s share this, because the engine's in the back, and you want to pull out at a junction like this, you're... Come on, baby. <laughs> um, you're, you're right up the front, so you don't have to stick your bonnet out before you look out. As I said, folks, I hear it all the time, people saying, oh, I'd love a camper van and all this. Go and get one. Case in point, what an absolutely beautiful van, and I just feel, my, I feel so privileged to have gotten the opportunity to drive it. It really, really was a treat for me now, I have to say. And uh, thank you so much to Darren for letting me, uh, letting me get it out on the road and uh, getting a spin of it. It's, um, yeah, that's gonna, that, it's gonna take a while to wipe this smile off my face, I'll tell you. So listen, folks, thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I have a few more car reviews on the way over the next while, and I'll see you in a future video. Chat to you soon.